Hello, my name is Wally McDermott. I am Vice President of Cloud Business Development here at Scality. And today I'm going to walk you through a brief presentation and a demonstration of Zenko, Scality's multi-cloud data controller. For today's presentation, I'm going to assume that the listener already knows something about Scality and our two products. Our first product is Ring, which is our software-defined scale-out file and object storage solution. And the second product is Zenko, our multi-cloud data controller. So in today's presentation, I'm not going to cover a corporate overview or much detail about Scality the company. If you're interest, interested in Scality, certainly go to www.scality.com. But I will do a brief review of what multi-cloud is and where Zanko fits. And then I'll touch on two use case driven demonstration scenarios. Uh, important to note that everything that I will show you today in the product is available to you in a free Zanko sandbox that you can launch by going to zanko.io. So a quick review of multi-cloud. Uh, Scality certainly thinks multi-cloud is real. We hear about multi-cloud from all of our prospects, customers, and partners. On the right-hand side of this slide are the results of a survey done by a company called RightScale in their annual State of the Cloud report. And fully 85% of the respondents to their survey said that they have some sort of multi-cloud strategy in place. And even Andy Jassy, who's the CEO of Amazon Web Services, uh, told the Wall Street Journal in an interview last year that he's hearing the same thing from his customers. Uh, he believes that in the future there will not be only a single cloud, but rather a, a handful of large cloud firms with companies taking a multi-provider approach to the cloud. And that's where Zanko comes in. Uh, Zanko sits above your private cloud resources, such as Scality Ring, as well as your more legacy on-prem conventional storage products, maybe like a NAS solution, and also any public cloud provider, AWS, Azure, Google, and many, many more. And Zanko makes all of those storage locations manageable through a single user interface, which is the Zanko Orbit Management Portal, So I'll show you in the demonstration today. There are four main pillars of Zanko. The first is a unified interface across clouds. What does that mean? Well, it means that most clouds, most different providers have different interfaces and APIs that they ask customers and application developers to support. And Zanko only has a single interface. Uh, we've adopted the de facto industry standard Amazon S3 API as the way to write to Zanko. But then Zanko takes care of translating those API calls to any of the backend storage locations. So for example, we can write to Microsoft Azure with the S3 API through Zenko. Uh, the next key pillar is native cloud data format. Uh, very important that any data Zenko writes to any of our storage locations is stored in the native format of that storage location. So again, for example, when we write to Azure, we store that data in Azure format. When we, when we write to Google, we store that data in Google format. So all of your data, no matter where it's stored, is accessible to you and accessible by any cloud service. And that's very important to our customers who really see value in the many, many cloud services available for business intelligence, analytics, artificial intelligence, things like that. The next key pillar is a policy-based data management. That's the ability to easily control what happens to your data. And that's really going to come through in our demonstration today. And the last key pillar is the fact that Zenko is metadata driven and provides a search layer so you can quickly and easily find any of your data, no matter where, where it is and which storage location it is stored in. So the first of the two demo use cases I'm going to walk you through today. Uh, in demo use case number one, I'm going to replicate data to two distinct clouds at one time with a single policy. And in this case, the two clouds are Amazon Web Services and Google. So why would you want to do this? What's the business value? Well, let's say that uh, for whatever reason, I've chosen Amazon Glacier as my cloud archive of choice. I have a good business relationship with Amazon. I've got much of my data already up there, and I'll, I want to continue that. But maybe for a current or a future project, I've selected a different cloud service that I want to use to analyze my data. So maybe in this example, I've, used, I've selected the uh, Google Cloud Machine Learning Service. And I want to be able to send some of my data to Glacier to continue to archive it, but also some of my data to Google so I can use the cloud machine learning service. 
So the Zanko benefits in this use case is I can easily manage these multiple clouds with a single interface and a single policy, and that will come through in the demonstration. And more importantly, I can maintain the most cost-effective way of doing this. So Zanko will send data to AWS and Google at the same time. And most of you know that when you send data to a cloud, your ingress charges are essentially free, if not free. And so Zanko doesn't incur any additional cost when moving data to these clouds. Unlike if I wanted to move data from Amazon to Google, then I would have to pay fairly expensive egress charges. In my second use case, I'm gonna replicate data to three different AWS regions. Um, why might I wanna do this? Well, it offers me a higher level of redundancy than AWS currently offers. With the way AWS works today, you can only do replication between uh, two regions. <clears throat> so AWS, does one region to another. Zenko will allow you to do one region to another, to another, to another, et cetera. Uh, this might be a really efficient way to geographically distribute content and data. So for example, if I have offices in Los Angeles, Singapore, um, and London, I can actually replicate data to all three locations with Zenko, something that again, AWS wouldn't natively allow me to do. And last but not least, certainly with today's GDPR compliance and data sovereignty challenges, this Zanko capability allows me to ensure that the data resides in the region where uh, it's most compatible and compliant with the local laws. <clears throat> so again, Zanko benefits here, we augment uh, Amazon S3's built-in capabilities and a repetition of the benefit from the previous use case, we do this in the most cost-effective way possible to limit any egress or cross-region um, charges you might have to pay. So let's go ahead and get into the demonstration. I'm gonna to switch to my browser. I have three tabs open. The first is to the Zenko Orbit Management Portal, and I'll walk you through this in quite a bit of detail. Uh, the second is a browser that's pointed to Google Cloud Storage, and I've got a couple of buckets here. Here's my GCP main bucket, and I'll come back to this in the demo. This is currently empty. I'm also pointed to uh, my S3 browser where I have three different buckets. Uh, I won't go through each one, but all of these are empty as well. And you'll see that data will be moved into these buckets during the demonstration. So on the left-hand side of Zanko Orbit, I have a number of different tabs or areas that I can access. I have a dashboard that just gives me a quick overview of how many objects I'm managing, how much total data, how much capacity I'm using, uh, some fairly basic high-level information about Zenko. I can drill into more statistics about capacity utilization, CPU usage, things like that. But then one of the key concepts I can create is what we call a storage location. And a storage location in Zenko can be a cloud, it can be scale to ring, uh, and can, it can be other on-prem uh, storage resources as well. <clears throat> Very simple to create. So here up top, you see I have an AWS NorCal region I'll show you how I created that by clicking the edit button. So you simply get, give it a name, and this is a descriptive name. In this case, uh, I chose AWS NorCal because it maps to uh, the, the actual location that I'm using. I pick AWS S3 from a drop down menu. I put in my access keys, and then I target an existing bucket in that AWS location. And again, I can change this if, if I need to, to Google, DigitalOcean, Scality Ring, Wasabi. And this list will grow over time as Zenko adds more and more storage locations. So I've got three different AWS storage locations and one Google location. What can I do with those? Well, I can create, in this case, replication policies. So I have two of those. I have AWS NorCal and GCS replication. And that does sort of what the name implies. Um, again, I've given it a descriptive name. I've selected a source bucket. Now this is a target in Zenko. So I'm going to write to Zenko or the application would write to this target bucket. But then Zenko will take whatever data goes into this bucket and I can uh, add some optional tags to limit the uh, type of data that gets replicated. It will then push that data not only to my NorCal AWS region, but to my GCS region as well. And very similarly, I have a uh, multi-AWS region policy that will take data that's sent to a multi-AWS region target uh, bucket in Zenko, 
and then replicate that to three different AWS regions. So very, very simple to set up both storage locations and policies in Zenko. Uh, I'm not a programmer, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I was able to set this up in about 10 or 15 minutes. And again, everybody has access to that in a free sandbox at Zenko.io. So let's go ahead and look at how we easily move data uh, into our multiple clouds. So here is my, uh, I'm using, by the way, an embedded browser. You can use any data browser and just point it to uh, Zenko as well, or you can just point your application to, to Zenko, but there's an embedded browser in Zenko. Here are the two targets that I've created. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy a file and have it land both in AWS and Google. So let me open up this target. I don't have any uh, objects yet, so I'm going to upload something. Let me get to... my Zenko folder where I have some demo files. In this case, I will upload the Scality Zenko data sheet. And now that shows up as being added to the uh, target bucket here in uh, Scality uh, Zenko orbit. And I will skip over to my uh, Google Cloud Storage browser. Here's my main bucket. I now have the Zanko target replicated. Again, this was empty before. And here's my data sheet. I go to S3. Uh, here's my NorCal bucket. Refresh this. And again, here's my AWS and TCP target bucket. And there is also my data sheet. And again, it's in cloud native format. So whether or not I open this from within uh, AWS or within Google, it will be in the native format of that platform. So that's the first demo, first use case. And again, that gives me the ability to, for example, continue to, to use a, uh, AWS for archive purposes, but potentially use Google for any given cloud service that they offer that I might want to work, uh, that I might want to use for a, a certain project. So for the second demo, what I'll do is I will go back to my multi AWS region target and I will upload, in this case, let's do the Zenko white paper into that target. And here you see it shows up in Zenko orbit. Uh, now I'm only copying this to AWS regions. So let me go back to my AWS browser and I will open up my East bucket VA East demo bucket, and here again is my multi AWS regions target, and here's my Zenko white paper, and I'll just very quickly show you that it shows up in my uh, Ohio East demo bucket, as well as my CA West demo bucket. I may have to refresh this one. There it is. So again, a single policy, and I've, rep I've replicated data to three different and distinct AWS regions. So thank you, everybody. I hope this overview and demonstration was interesting. Again, please feel free to go to Zenko.io and launch your free sandbox, and you can do everything that I've just showed you. Thank you very much.